Tom Roberts in the studio. I'm so pumped to have you in here. First, I, I, we're going to talk in a second, but I, can I pay you a compliment first? Oh my gosh, thank you, yes. I'm going to give you a compliment. I usually don't start out the shows with compliments, though maybe I should because it might make the guests feel better. But, yeah, I but, know. But I do want to give you one because, you know, there's so many people that come to me with different types of ideas and thoughts. And of all those people that come, there's very few that actually follow through and execute. Mm -hmm. And we talk like maybe like what, once or twice yeah. about a podcast. Yes. And then you fucking execute it. And now you have a podcast, an uncomfortable podcast, and it's crushing it. And it's here at Dear Media. And I'm just proud of you for actually taking an idea and turning it into a, a, a show. Because there's so many people that just have these ideas and they never actually follow through. And we all know like... You know, those people that say like, oh, like the Uber, that was, I had that idea. It's like, you didn't do anything. You didn't execute. Yeah. You, you fucking did. It's so the, it's cool. It's the dreamer mind. I call it the dreamer mind where you think of something and then you just dream all day about it and never do anything about it. I know. You got it. You got to put in the tools to execute. Yeah. And as a creative too, I mean, I'm sure you guys can relate to this. That's like the biggest thing because all day long, all you do is have ideas and it takes it just takes going the extra mile to execute it and then the world gets to just be a part of what you're creating and that's the beauty in being a creative but that's the hard part is getting out of that dream mindset because yeah, like I, I think about like how many things how many amazing things we haven't seen throughout the, the history of mankind because people have been too scared to put something out there like and for whatever reason like i don't yeah. know maybe we don't have that fear mechanism but you know, it's 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 weird. Yeah, failure is scary. <laughs> yeah, you gotta clear. <laughs> Choked on a on a sun life there. Yeah, guys, it's just it's just a choke. You're allowed to cough these days. Okay? Oh shit! You know, I didn't even think about that <laughs> no. angle. No. Oh yeah. I was I saw a meme and it was like, cause you know the air quality is so bad and it's like, are you coughing because of the air quality? Are you coughing because you were just smoking weed? Or what or about you when you just like fall, swallow something down the wrong pipe? Yeah, and then you feel like you have to exit the building and leave and never come back and then get your temperature taken again and go to the hospital it's a lot i swallowed something like green tea down the wrong pipe the other day and i had like a cough attack and did I'm we like, just turn this into the uncomfortable podcast and everybody yeah. like oh shit this dude just coughed i'm like you're allowed to cough what about that that's the title of the episode yeah you're allowed to cough you're allowed to cough i'm scared to do anything I'm in 2020 do it, i'm scared to do it in public i'm scared to do anything in 2020 because yes <laughs> Coughing offends people now. No. Oh, it's so funny. I was having a conversation with a friend and we were talking about that idea of how everything offends everyone. And I feel like people are losing a grasp of what should actually be offensive. And then on top of that, no one knows how to communicate or have a conversation. This is why I wanted to have you on here. <laughs> because I was going to do this podcast called like The Little Cancelers Who Cried Wolf. Mm -hmm. And I talked about it before. Because it's like... What's happened is we've gone so far, everything's offending everybody so much that like is everything is being a cancelable offense or or wow. something that that pisses people off. And so it's like we've gone to a place now, it's like, what do we actually need to cancel? Like what is yes. what actually is offensive? Yeah. And it's, it's, too, it's too much now. No, exactly. And I what's so interesting with being a part of the world of like activism and social justice and like raising awareness is essentially you're advocating for things that are important and necessary and need the attention of people but then in the midst of all of that you have a side that's so extreme and it's like okay in seventh grade you said the n-word and you're done like your whole career is over for something you did years and years ago and no one's ever been able there's no forgiveness and and then on the other side, there's people that have done things wrong for a really long time, have set up a system that hurts and offends and oppresses people, and they get away with it. And so it's like right now, 2020, we're seeing this in every sphere. It's not just racism, but it's like COVID-19. Where's the line of being respectful, but also like I need to live my life. Like I need to go to the grocery store for my mental sanity. Am I allowed to go shopping? And that's where... I feel like I fall in the middle. It's like we need to take a look at everything that's happening in the world. And it's like for me, I'm so careful with what I put my voice behind because it has influence. And I think what people can't give into is fear. Shoot, if I don't say something, are people going to hate me? Am I going to be wrong? But it's like, no, stick to your convictions. If this is wrong to you, then you need to say something about it. But at the same time, if you see the silver lining between it, you know, like stick to your convictions. And that's the hardest part is when you have the unpopular opinion in the room, 
that's when things are very uncomfortable. Or more so, I think, the uncomfortable thing is giving people a second chance. Letting people grow. And also showing the road to redemption. Like, yes. if you... There's a lot of people that were fired or quote unquote canceled. Like there has to be some road of redemption that people who are screwing up still can look to and see and and sort of take note. Yeah, like have, there's like hope for the future that like if you mess up, that there's room for you. And I posted something about cancel culture. It was like a graphic where I was saying pretty much you shouldn't count everyone out if you've messed up in the past and how it's very harmful. And what's so funny is people were like, oh, you're you're fake, you're a coon, you're this, like you're just wanting to give white people room, all this stuff. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Where did you even say, you didn't say white people? Yeah, and I was like, see, there you go. Once again, like it's this divisiveness that I just kind of started seeing and a trend of divisiveness that it's like us against them. And it's like- And that doesn't help anybody. Yeah, and um, I think it's Daryl Davis, a total inspiration to me and just a little bit about his story he started befriending white like white supremacist kkk members and through their friendship he's black clearly white <laughs> kkk members um, a little bit of oil and water yeah. There, yeah, yeah um and through their friendship they started handing in like their robes and then it started to be like higher up people in the kkk so whole chapters were being like taken down because through friendship through love and, and also I, probably because they, like, a lot of this stuff is based in ignorance, right? Yes. And when you start to understand people, we've been talking about this a lot, when you start to understand other people's perspectives, and maybe you don't, maybe you can't share that experience, but if you can reserve some, uh, some, t- some uh, a place in your mind and your heart to be like, okay, maybe my experience is different from someone else's and I got to try my best to understand theirs yes. so that I can be a empathetic and sympathetic and, you know, comprehensive person. But, but like there's so much unwilling to do that. And, and I think the problem is, is what you nailed on the head is that we've created this divisive culture that doesn't leave room for education. Mm-hmm. Like we've seen these people get canceled. And I, and I think to myself all the time, like, wouldn't it be way more powerful if they didn't get canceled and that we all had to watch their road to redemption? And so that not just they would learn, but peop- other people would learn alongside. Yes. But when you just cancel, say goodbye, like that takes a learning lesson away from everybody. Yeah, I'm big on accountability culture. I think that that's what we need to change it to. Because when we come to cancel someone, like, oh, they're canceled, they're taken out. Instead, what we need to be asking for is accountability. Okay, you did something that was wrong. You need to be called out for it. You need to be educated on why that was wrong. And now these are the things that you can start doing to start changing the way that you live your life. And then... It's up to them to decide, okay, am I going to change or I'm going to be a jerk and stay in my ignorance and brush it off and not take ownership? Because that's the two, it's two pieces to the puzzle. It's accountability. Okay, so you're called out and then it's the ownership. And I think what breaks my heart when I see a cancel trend or whatever is when someone takes full accountability for their actions and they're still not like there's people don't give them the room. Yeah, there's no reconciliation there. And with that, on the other side, it's not my job. I'm not, it's not, none of us can forgive someone when it's not us to accept an apology. And so I think that's where, you know, people that are still hurt from whatever's been done to them, whether it's like you offended me with this statement or you said something out of pocket or you did something to me, we're not the ones that, the majority, I guess, that can accept someone's apology, but at the same time, I'm not gonna cancel someone for it. And that's the silver lining, is where it's really hard, where if someone's still sitting in hurt, they're, of course they're gonna be, I don't know, if you've been crossed before, sure. it's hurtful when you see one of your friends hanging out with someone that's crossed you, and there's a lack of forgiveness there. So it's kind of on the other person to like walk that road of forgiveness, but I'm not forcing anyone to do it. I'm just saying that's the problem is people think they can walk in unforgiveness and move forward. But I'm like, but what happens when it happens to you? You're going to be begging for forgiveness. You're going to be begging that someone would give you a chance and recognize how much you've changed. Because we're so lucky that high school us and college us, we weren't just videotaped all the horrible things that we said. Oh my God, can you imagine? Could you imagine? I was like, I don't care who you are, what demographic you come from. We've all said horrible things that if it got to the light of day, we would be 
done. That's why when I see people commenting all, all judgy on people's photos and being an asshole. Or the, wor- the worst one says like, do better. Yeah, do, like, I can't. Oh, with, do God. better. Do better. Like that's so condescending and self-righteous yeah. because I'd like to see your perfection. Yeah. Like if you're going to yell at someone for not being perfect in a certain area where they have room to improve, let's see your perfection first. Yeah. And it's also how you go about it. Because when someone says do better, it's like, okay, what do you mean by that? What are the action steps? That's like my biggest pet peeve. I'm just a very actionable person. I I hate when people just say things and there's no action behind it. And so if you want someone to do better, you want to see change happen, okay, what do you want to see? Because I feel like that's very void and empty and a cop out. You, you're dumb. You're stupid. This offended me. Okay, what offended you? How can you be better? I'm always for giving people alternatives and things to say. I feel like even when I, if I make a graphic for something, like something that's been like going through my mind, the next swipe is usually questions to ask yourself, self-reflection, or things you can say. Just things to jog the mind and idea. I feel like that's a whole point of ownership is the action steps behind it, you know? Yeah, and this is, I mean, there's so many reasons I wanted to talk to you. W- one thing, we just kind of jumped into it. Got yeah. it for, <laughs> I want you, how did you How did you become so passionate about, about activism? I know you kind of like started with your graphics, but before that, what were you doing? And maybe like give people a little bit of your background and story because obviously we, we jumped forward and said, hey, go listen to the Uncomfortable Podcast. And like, <laughs> yeah. here we are. But I think like just to give some context of like who you are, your background for the audience that's maybe unfamiliar. Yeah, so how it happened was an accident. I just think it was it was genuinely an accident. Um, what kind of what was happening with just the civil unrest with the injustices and the Black Lives Matter movement, starting with like Ahmed Aubrey's murder. I had made a graphic with an action step, and then what was that graphic? Um, they were doing a run walk jog. It was like two point three miles for his birthday, and so I was like, this is a way you can be involved. And then when George Floyd's murder happened, I was just so upset that I had created like numbers you can call, things to say. And then I realized so many people weren't going to look at it. Like it was just going to be a flash in the pan, like you're going to see it and then it's going to be gone. And so I put a statement in front of it, just like don't ignore something because it makes you uncomfortable. And then I think it took off. And the reason I think it took off was just because of the fact that so many people didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to say. And so I was like, this is uncomfortable. This is going to be hard to see, but we can't ignore it. And from there, there were so many other things that were floating in my mind as news was coming out and people were starting to come out with statements and just, it was craziness. And so I just kept adding like action steps and things to do things to say how to navigate certain ideas and through that so many people were like thank you it's it was smart because one it was creative and it was it made people think and remember because I, I remember that graphic got your graphics have been shared by a lot of people now i mean at this point it's pretty incredible but in addition to that i think you hit the nail on the head which you actually created some tangible actionable steps that people want to take it and i you know lauren and i we've, we've caught some flack on this show because we're just like you know just posting a black square and not really knowing why and not really know what you're doing and yeah. like not having a real reason behind anything and just like aimlessly doing things like i think there was a social media blackout today but nobody really knew and it's like people are just doing it to do it yeah and i think that's become part of the problem it's like if you really believe in a cause and you want to be helpful like there has to be some thought behind it and so like with this plot platform like the goal has been okay let's take a t- step back and like have some conversations some uncomfortable conversations yeah. and, like figure out ways that people can actually learn and educate themselves and then take action mm-hmm. but just doing things to do things yeah doesn't move the needle for anybody not at all and what's so interesting with this particular wave of this movement that we're seeing is it's long term and that's we're in an area that's never been like covered before we're in like uncharted territory where no one knows what to do because i feel like this is the longest that we're seeing i guess our generation is seeing with civil unrest and also we're in like the unprecedented times of covid 19 and just a generational change happening from 2020 and so with all of that there's so many unknowns right now and with that i think it's so important to just know that 
everyone's trying to figure everything out. No one has anything figured out and that's okay. So if you were like, if, if, when you're sitting down talking to your friends um, and you're like, and, and they're coming to you, let's say, let's take like, um, let's take Kenzie. Cause I can, I like Kenzie. And I can talk, <laughs> I can pick on Kenzie. Kenzie comes to you and says like, Hey Dom, I'm really, and, and um, I can talk about Kenzie because yeah, you know, we great, both know Kenzie. Great. Hi Kenzie. How are you? Um, <laughs> <laughs> and if she comes to you and says like, Hey Dom, I'm uncomfortable with this topic, but I want to do something. I don't know what, like, how do you navigate that? Conversation? Cause I think that's the other thing. Why I yeah. love your podcast is there's a lot of people that want to do things, but they don't want to misstep. And because what happens in the missteps is like maybe somebody tries to do something and they fuck up. And then instead of like being rewarded for the attempt to try to do something good, they're attacked and shamed. And then yeah. like they get scared of get, and they think that's part of the problem yeah. that's going on right now. It's like you it's a backtrack then. It's like, oh, I'm never doing that again. It's the like wh- back to back to posting whatever, you know. Yes, exactly. I think the biggest thing to know and what I tell everyone is like you need to put your comfort aside and your fear aside because at the end of the day you're talking about an opinion you're sharing something that to some people is a very unpopular opinion and also an offensive opinion but you know that it would bring good to share it and so you need to put those two things aside no matter what you do you are going to get some there's going to be an aunt that's going to comment and send you a message saying how horrible you are and all this stuff but you need to accept that you need to be you just need to know that's part of the deal and I think for me that was the biggest thing is there were so many things that I wanted to speak on but I was so scared of what people were gonna say back to me and once I started getting all the crazy comments the death threats the Jesus yeah just it was so intense and I was like people are still gonna say this People are still going to come for me for saying this, so I'm just going to keep saying it because it's my truth and I'm going to own it. And people say shit in real life behind your back. Yes. You just don't hear it like social media. And they probably think things that they shouldn't be thinking all the time, too. So it's like I feel like you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. And so putting yourself out there like you might as fucking well do it. Exactly. And that's why I tell people stick to your convictions and be honest with yourself. And for people that are trying to navigate dang like how do I say this say it in your words say it in your truth if you don't if you're like I love people that are just brutally honest to be honest I haven't known what to say for the longest time but I'm just going to try saying something and usually the thing that they say is so heartfelt and beautiful and it might not be perfect but it's like I get the picture of what you're trying to say that means so much more to me than Okay, uh, yeah, so sign these petitions and make phone calls if you can. I also think we need to give people the benefit of the doubt. What happened to the benefit of the doubt? Like, also, like, see where their intention is, like you just said. It's like, what is their intention? That is literally my motto, my life motto, and the 2020 motto, and the only thing that will keep you sane in fighting against any type of anything i guess with any conflict in the world you have to give people the benefit of that it's the only way for genuine change to take place exactly if you're always constantly just saying oh um did you see their post i can't believe they did it's like dude you actually don't know you don't know what they meant by that you probably took it out of context have you talked to them is this a person that you know what have they been going through? Have you kept up with them? You don't, you know, what's their background? What's their family like? You know what I'm saying? You don't know any of this until you have a conversation. So it's like by giving people the benefit of the doubt, it's like you're saving relationships that don't need to be taken away. I feel like so many people are like, I've lost so many friends in 2020. And I'm like, really? I haven't lost that many. And I feel like I'm speaking my truth. And there's people that have posted things that I'm like, ooh, I do not agree with that, but I've talked to them. And then come to find out, we actually believe the same thing. Is It's so funny. I saw this video about someone who was like, oh, I'm conservative, da 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 and we're like reposting all these like hateful things. And then um, someone, they, someone asked them questions like this, this, and this. And all all their answers were the same as the person answering the questions. And so I was like, they believe the same things. And same with this other guy. This guy DM'd me and was like, I can't believe you would post this. And I was like, well, what do you believe? 
And then he told me, and I was like, I believe that too. It's funny when you when you go through because I think like so. First of all, a lot of this year has been so politicized, which I think is a huge problem. We're in an election year, and it's like yeah. you're on this side, or you're on this side, and if you're not, there's no there's there's no, no room for logical ground. conversation. Yeah. And like, you know, I don't get political on this show, and it's funny. The funniest thing is we don't get so political here. And when we don't get, when we're not political, people are like, you should be more political and take a stance, da, da. And then we do and people get mad. So it's like, you can't, Yeah. It, there's, there's no, it's, you, if you do something, you lose. If you don't do something, you lose. Like, you know, so you just got to do what's right for you. I also think too, with like content creators and friends, like let's take both those groups. I don't want to agree with every fucking thing my friend That's says. the most boring thing yeah, ever. I, I, that sounds like hell for and me to go out to dinner with a friend and sit across the table and we agree on every single thing. And I think with content creators, and you can tell me if you agree with this, but I think we're in this point now where, you know, a lot of people have already gathered these followings mm. and people will unfollow people if they're not exactly aligned with every single thing they agree with for me like I like when a content creator speaks out about something maybe I don't agree with it shows that they have a stance it shows that they're that they have their own personality and are going to do things on their own terms yeah, yeah people will say to me they're like well are you conservative or are you liberal because I don't really get into either side and yeah. I'll be like well there's an easy <laughs> way for me to answer this like I don't want the government in my personal life yeah. telling me who I can love or not love or telling my friends who they can love or not love. I don't want them at all involved in my social life at all. And I also don't want them involved in my money. I don't yeah. want them touching my money. I don't want them raising my taxes. I don't want there's so like, what does that mean? Cause like I'm probably very socially liberal yeah. and I'm very fiscally conservative, conservative maybe. Yeah. But like, does that mean I can only be in one side or the other? Like, no. And I actually disagree with a lot of things conservatives do. And I disagree with a lot of things liberals do. Yeah. And I think the problem is we've gotten to this place where it's like, you're either with us or against us on mm. either side. And if you're not, it's like, well, that's not how human beings work. Like I, I always tell people like, when it comes to parenting, you can't do that. Like yeah. you can be like my way or your way. Like it doesn't work. Or friendship, yeah. like it's either my way or your way. It's like, no, it's a relationship. You got to give and take. Exactly. And what's so interesting is we, I think the reason why we're seeing these two extremes come out is because right now, just with the way our government is ran, is we have a lot of extremes in office and a lot of and a lot of extreme voices with our news outlets too. Oh God! If Don't you get me started. yeah, I'm not even gonna go there, but I'm just gonna like make one thing that I was talking to a friend about. If you turn on the opposing side, if you turn on yeah, it's oh, look what they're doing. I can't believe it. Da, 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 da. They're the most horrible monsters. Da, da, da. And then you turn on the other side and they're saying the exact same thing. And so, uh, I don't know. I'm the same way too. And what's so interesting about me as an activist operating in this world is that I am in the middle. I'm in the happy middle of understanding. Because what's so interesting is when you, when I understand someone and I hear their story, I'm like, that would make sense. Of course you would believe that. Why wouldn't you believe that? You've known anything else. And then people get mad at me. They're like, I can't believe that you would da, 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 stand up for this. Or I can't believe you wouldn't stand up for this. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Or when it comes to COVID, you could be like, listen, I'm all about human life and keeping people safe and doing all that. But at the same time, maybe I'm going to question the lockdown and be like, hey, if we love human life, there's also a lot of humans being affected because they're shut down and they can't get outside and they can't see friends and they can't run their businesses. Like, so like, are we only like, can we not question anything anymore? Can we say, can we not say, Hey, is there a better way? Can we not say, Hey, maybe we tried something and it didn't work as well as we thought. Like nobody, it's either like, Nope, you're either with or against. There's no room for conversation. Yeah, And it's all about how you do it too. be respectful. Right. Um, I love that you posted on your story when you were talking about COVID and just your viewpoint on things. And you did it in a way that was so respectful and so thought provoking too. And a lot of people, like you said, felt the same way, but felt like they couldn't. And that's walking in your truth. Yeah. I think that's the most important thing that you can do is walk in your truth and just know that you're not alone. Well, what's interesting about that, and I think you'll relate to this is what was so interesting to me was I and it's on my highlights so that's actually the only highlight I have because I thought because and I left it for a reason where is my highlight I don't you don't have one yet <laughs> but what was interesting was not was not my viewpoint because there's people who agree people disagree and that's okay I actually think I actually say that's a really good thing but was how many people wrote in saying hey thanks for at least saying something I may not agree with you or I do agree with you but thanks for saying something I've been so scared to say something and my response to most of those people is like 
why are you scared to speak your truth or to question something or to or to open up a dialogue like that is a problem like if we're all scared to have the conversation because listen i put that out there and maybe somebody writes in and points out something i'm not aware of like oh okay i can change my mind and Mm. respect that but the but if people are too scared to voice their opinions we get to a dangerous place yeah and i think the fear comes from the extreme right You don't want to come off as an extremist. When you share your opinion, people like to label you. Just anytime you do that, good or bad. And so right now we're seeing, okay, I'm confused about the lockdown, right? You want to open a dialogue? Did you know that Michael, like, you know what I'm saying? It's, you're now labeled as X, Y, and Z. And it's like, we don't have to do that. You don't have, you shouldn't be labeled an extremist just because you agree with one side or another or because you ask questions or because you ask questions exactly and that's the thing is i feel like right now our world is so divisive more divisive than i've ever seen and for good and bad you know there's a lot of really important and good conversations coming out of it but at the same time there's a lot of people that are just trying to create more divide and it's like we can actually stand together in this it doesn't and i think people get so offended and so closed off that they they're not even listening yeah i fear you know with everything with the george floyd murder the I thought it was, you know, there's one thing like 9-11 united this country, you know, years and years ago. And it was like one of the things we were united on when it happened. Like everybody banded together. Like this is an American thing, American problem. We're going to we're going to deal with it as Americans. I feel like with George Floyd, there was every single like the majority, I'd say 99.999% of people said that was a murder. That was wrong. We all agree that was wrong. That was terrible. And so and, and that was an injustice. And we're all on the same page. And then the protest started and it was like, that's a good thing. We're going to, we're going to speak out. We're going to make this issue louder. But what's happened along the way now, as I think like to your point, there's, there's gotten these extremists involved. And so now we're like, Hey, I hope we're not losing what we started this for in the first place. And what the message was to begin with was against social injustice. Like w- there's a lot going on now. That's like, it's, it's convoluting the message. And I think that's a problem because now people are divided again, where it's like, we were all united on one thing. Like this was something that was wrong. Mm-hmm. I think also that, that's where, you know, grace for this movement has to be involved too, where I think people start to tend to forget the bigger picture, right? It's like- That's what I'm saying. And it's like, we're fighting for human rights. Human life is really what we're talking about. That's the issue. And, you know, like you're saying, it's starting, there's so many different messages and there's so many conspiracy theories now. And I'm like, hold on to what's true. What we know has happened. And don't be afraid to say something's wrong just because you're scared to be tied in with everything else that's bad. It's like every time I speak out about a murder, an unfortunate killing um, that takes place or police brutality, and I, I create something and action stuff, whatever. And the first thing I'll always get in my messages is, do you know that they actually had a history of abuse or did you know? I'm like, okay. So, I mean, what are we saying? We're discounting human life. And then on the other side of it, people are not going about justice the right way. And it's like, people who love to use stats to try to justify their position. Like, the, like that's the problem is you can't just look and say like, that was wrong. That it's was a murder. Com- they, that was they wrong. They look for confirmation bias. Yes. They look, they look for something and, and they keep confirming their opinion over and over and over again until they feel they have solid facts to present. It's to a people. way to make ourselves feel better about something that's wrong in the world. We're like, well, if we, back it up with these stats that correlated across these widespread issues, then we can maybe see why it could potentially be justified. You can't just say like, no, that was not justified. It was wrong. There needs to be consequences moving forward. Like that's exactly. And I think the reason why this outcry has lasted as long as it does is because we've seen it firsthand. Unfortunately, like there's video evidence and we're seeing it and it's horrible and it's sad. And then it's like the civil arrest of waiting. Like, we're waiting for someone to get charged, arrested, and put in prison for stuff that's happened. Or it's like, we're waiting, and in that waiting period, it's like, I don't know, the world's kind of falling apart, and it's where this divide is happening. And I think that, for me, I was kind of having just like a morning reflection, thinking about just the podcast, my social media platform and the conversations that I'm having and moving forward, what is it going to look like? Because I've also noticed a drop off with just 
the conversations that we're having of people starting to check out again or it's not as important or there hasn't been any news breaking things that have happening so the conversation slowed down and I'm like but this is still so important to me and I've noticed even with me like I also have like a life and in the midst of everything that was happening I was posting a lot posting a lot because there was a lot to be said a lot of information to be shared but now where things have kind of slowed down I've posted like pictures of me hey guys how's it going just on my story whatever and people are upset about that too where they're like I used to follow you because you were posting about social justice. And now you're posting about you. And I'm like, wait, so now I'm just a resource. And also, why is there only one layer? Why can't a person have 800 layers? I have a lot of different facets. I'm a fucking Gemini, by the way. One day I'm a bitch <laughs> to my husband. The next day I might be nice. The next day I might want to have sex. I'm changing. I'm or maybe allowed... even all that happens in the same day. You yeah, never <laughs> you never know. You never know. I don't understand this thing with Instagram and social media where you have to be one way all the time. Yes. I have a lot of different layers to me, as I'm sure you do as I'm sure every human does. We're complex. There's so many different things, hobbies. You know, maybe we want to show what we're wearing one day and then maybe we want to talk about activism another day. Like, where did it become that you have to be this one thing all the time? Because I don't want to follow someone that's one way all the time. I need need some diversity. I need to mix it up. Yeah. Like, I need 100 personalities from you at all times. I got like three or four going. (laughs) I I can't do boring, flat, like one thing. That's just my monologue. (laughs) Dude, I agree with that so much. And that's how I've been feeling too. And I posted about that the other day. I'm like, you need to respect people's life. Like they have a life and they're sharing it with you on social media. And you need to respect that. Like it's my, it's technically my personal Instagram. Like, you know, and and I think that's what we need to start doing is like accepting people for who they are, knowing that people are complex. Like humans by nature are complex. There's no yes or no to the things we're fighting for. Everything is a gray area. And that's what, if we started walking in those truths of understanding, like humans aren't perfect, everything's a gray area, and we're still trying to figure everything out. By the way, we're in the middle of a pandemic. I think people would approach other people's views with a lot more kindness, understanding, and empathy. And that's what I want to see happen because I'm, I personally, I'm so sick and tired of just being mentally and exhausted from unpacking nonsense all day long from both sides. You have to just ignore it. I think that I, what I would say to people that are writing hateful shit on the internet, I myself have never gone out and commented something negative on someone else's page because I believe that that negativity is taking away from me being productive yes. on my own life. I think that we have to get to a place where like if you're projecting negativity all the time, you have to look inward and realize that you're taking away from you growing as a person. Mm. It's like it's such a waste of fucking time. Yes. Well, it's like I was, Lauren and I were driving. We, we were in San Diego this morning. We were driving. And I was like, remember, you know, like those T-charts we do like pros and cons. Yeah. And I feel like it's like such like a first grade exercise. But more people should like do that in their actual life. Like pros and cons. Pros of writing this negative, hateful comment yes. to this person. And they could actually, maybe they might have a few pros. And then you say cons like and do that list. And I, I feel like honestly, just people are just firing from the hip. They're not thinking. They're not thinking about what they're putting out in the world. They're doing it with the intention of hurting people because maybe they're hurting. Yes. But it's like that's not going to make you feel better. And just to give you a micro example, imagine if Taylor put as much time as he did into masturbating into a hobby. Like he would know the fucking violin in and out by now. He would be a symphony violinist if he took the time. What's your take take on that? She's like, into uh, watching porn, masturbating every day. There you go. You know, I don't know how to play the violin. Yeah. You you don't know how to play the violin. Who's to say? Who's who's to say if you took the time for the next three years and took all the time you spend beating your meat and put it in towards learning an instrument, I bet you you could be famous, Taylor. self It's a self-reflection period now. <laughs> no, exactly. I think it's like a waste of time. And that's the worst thing about this is so many people are hurt and we're operating with hurt people that are just talking all this shit 24 7 and it's very toxic i think that the internet has come to a boiling point where 
I personally have seen that like the toxic nature of accounts there are literally accounts just for exposing people and that to me is mind-boggling what do you mean like there's accounts that are just there to like look for dirt on people and make them look bad yes yes yeah. and that to me is mind-boggling or trying to take away from some like coming, trying to tear people down yes yep. and coming for their character constantly and i'm just like oh my gosh I would love if we just strapped a camera just to follow you through your ins and out for a month or two and just really see how you live your life. And I'm sure there's some some actions that will be cancelable, like whatever, you know, the case is. And I just think that I've come to a place where, honestly, I ride out my truth 24-7. I will live in it and I'll operate in it. And I think I operate in this gray area and I just want to let everyone know that that's okay. It's okay to fall in the middle. Which is why I love what you're doing, right? It's why I wanted to work with you because I think like you're you're a really like you're a perfect person to start having these conversations and to leave a gray space for people to like, you know, come to their own conclusions and learn along the way. And like, you know, Lauren and I after doing this for a while on this show, like we have, you know, as you can imagine, we get pitches for the show and like we there's been plenty of times where there's some kind of hot button issue in the press that's like a negative thing. It's like mm. somebody like found something out about somebody or some service or some product and they like want to come on here and, and put it on the show so that we can tear them down. And I'm like, listen, we could do that with the show and turn it into a negative space. But there's so many other outlets doing that that like for us, we want this to be a platform of learning, of inspiration, of potentially turning something into a, a positive. Like if there is a negative, the only reason we would want to start talking about it is like, is there a positive thing that we can learn from yeah. here? Because if not, it's like there's plenty of other people tearing each other down and why I wanted to work with you is like you reserve that space to help people one maybe find that path of redemption and two for people listening to you to keep an open mind like oh maybe there is a, a path of forgiveness for other people and potentially down the line for themselves yeah and it's draining too it's so draining to just hear people be negative 24 7 and there is a statement that I say constantly 24 7 when people ask me for just a piece of like optimism but i always say i just genuinely believe there are more good people than bad operating in the world right yeah, now i share that opinion yeah and i think that if we remember that truth you know because i think the negative the bad can be overpowering a lot honestly i think when you operate in knowing that there's more good people than bad there's more people that see your side that understand what you're fighting for than not i think you'll start to like let go of this social pressure of performing and trying to be something you're not and then also reminding yourself that like we don't live in a perfect world and there are going to be moments for us to step up and so we have to be bold and take those opportunities to do so you know have you i don't know if you're a howard stern fan at all or were in the past or are now or you might be too young but he <laughs> um back in the day like he came out with this movie called private parts and he was like you know he's the king of all media so he was it's this it's a really good movie but it was it, it it highlighted his journey as a radio guy going through the ranks and like he really was like out there and like saying things that other people wouldn't say and like rubbing a lot of people the wrong way and the rate and, and the people at the at the um, network level the executives they hated him because he was just like this rogue um, and specifically this one guy and at one point they asked him where his ratings and they were crushing it and he's like you know the people that love him are tuning in here and he's like well what about the people that hate him and like the people that hate him were turning in double the amount of time yeah and like i think about this with mainstream media now it's like if you turn on fox news or you turn on cnn what they're doing is they're stoking hate in a lot of cases on one side or the other and what is that like using that example of the movie what does that do boost ratings and these people are running a business and if they just played the middle of the road maybe the ratings wouldn't be as high because it's not as dramatic and it's not as exciting but is it really doing us a service to listen to these things back and forth? Because I guarantee you, if you lean right and you turn on CNN, you're going to be pissed. And if you lean left and you turn on Fox, you're going to be pissed. And like, that's what they're doing. And then they're selling us at the same time and and stoking fear and dividing. It's like, I just think people should always remember like who's behind and what the intention is and like what the reasoning is and what the, and who is actually formulating the messages before they come to their conclusions. Exactly. I want to talk a little bit about your journey. Tell us about your childhood. Let's go way, way back. 
Um, so I grew up in Arizona. I grew up in a predominantly white neighborhood, and it was like a suburb in Arizona where, called where? Chandler. Okay. Um, so it's like right out. It's like thirty minutes away from like Metro Phoenix. Um, and I'm like half black, half Asian, but I grew up around my like Filipino side, so that was like really interesting. Um, growing up and just yeah, it was. I had a really interesting upbringing because. I'm very blessed that my parents both had like, they both worked and they had two good jobs that I was able to, I think, have a very enjoyable childhood and see, you know, just be intelligent and learn things and have space for me. But then also just this weird time of like the early 2000s where looking like me and being me wasn't popular but not understanding that as a kid. So I had like really weird encounters with just families and, you know, operating in like a diverse household of like two different cultures, like black culture, Asian culture, and then being surrounded by only white culture and stuff, I think really added to like this weird layer of like childhood trauma that I didn't realize. And so, I don't know, also just my relationship with my parents. I feel like everyone had really chill parents, and my parents were like, okay, like, do your homework, like, all this stuff. And like so they were chill or not chill? They were, like, half chill. Like, my <laughs> d- like, I'm like, does that exist? My mom was very savage, Asian, classic, and that's, like, great. You know, you got to have that, kind of. And then my dad was, like, savage but understanding is how I explain him. And what do you mean you had childhood um, trauma with all the different – diversity is around you um so for example i'm like this is like to paint a picture so i didn't like understand what races were when i was a kid i just i thought everyone was just i don't know i thought people were people but then um i had a friend when i was in first grade this was like my first encounter with just realizing that i was different it was like my first rate encounter with racism and we were bestes of, we were best friends and i was supposed to hang out at her house after school and we had like this huge plan to like hang out and then she came up to me when school started the day we were supposed to hang out and she was like oh um we can't hang out today because you're black and my grandpa hates black people so like you can't come over jesus and i was like wait i'm black like i was like what does that mean and yeah and, and that, she was and this was another first grader yeah and she was like in first grade i was in first grade and you could tell that it was very like like looking back on it now i can just know that she heard her dad say that and she said that to me like it wasn't like like she wouldn't have known yeah she didn't know what she was saying and she probably doesn't even know like that word hate like she doesn't understand it to its full extent and so that was the first thing that like marked me as a child like oh, there's something wrong with me, like, I'm different. And then, like, my hair, too. I had, like, really crazy long hair. And all I wanted was straight, like, straight hair, like, clueless, just straight, cute. (laughs) And so I was like, Mom, straighten my hair. And she, like, tried, but it didn't work, you know. And then I went to school the next day and totally got just, like, annihilated by all the kids. And they're like, what's wrong? Like, your hair is, like, it's so ugly. And just, like, made fun of me. And that was, like, another thing. And I was, like, dang, like, I hate that I look like this. And then I was the only black kid in my class until third grade. And another black family um, enrolled, like, their kids into school. So one of the girls was my age. And she, um, everyone had, every, she just was different. Like, she, she was just, you know, just came from, like, black culture. And so I was learning a lot from her. Like I started to change the way I talked and the way I dressed and all these things. And for the first time, people were like, you like Dom's ghetto and ratchet and like all these like labeling me all these things that were considered bad. And that was the first time that I didn't want to be labeled those things. So I started to like hate her. And so I developed like internalized racism against her. And I carried that all the way through, like, high school. And I did everything in my power to, like, fit in with, like, all these people that didn't even care if I looked... You know what I'm saying? Like, they didn't care anything about who I was, like, my interests as a person. And it was, like, this weird fine line where it was, like, I 
loved things about black culture but i was too scared to operate in them for fear of being labeled and like expelled and look like downcast and like all these things and so it wasn't until i graduated from high school where i just started i took this journey of like accepting myself and where i think i kind of being now 22 and like far from that world and seeing so many people struggle with that and i think how the world treats black people i just want people to know that like you have to go through that process of like loving yourself whatever that looks like and i'm seeing how society has set up like just beauty standards i guess is what really my childhood like i noticed a lot and so now like seeing that i'm like fighting against that like that's so stupid or we're like tearing down people for the all the wrong reasons and I think going through like all that childhood trauma of just me growing up and like like mixed and not like liking white people things but also liking quote unquote black people things and just operating in that weird space you know and for me now it's so cool that I have a voice where girls who I get like messages all the time I like had an episode on my podcast called the Durag discussion where I talked about hair and like the struggle that I had with hair as a kid and so many girls messaged me like dude I needed this episode like this was this is me right now growing up or people being like thank you so much for saying this because I just feel seen by this and I think that's so cool because I didn't have a person like me growing up isn't it cool when you have something that you think is a weakness when you're young and then you use it as a strength when you're older yeah that is like it gives me chills it's the best no it's honestly incredible I hate hearing stories like that because I well let me clarify I hate bullies so much when I was a kid I used to get in a lot of fights when I was a kid when Taylor will tell you and Lauren (laughs) unfortunately but it was you know and a lot of people at the time was like you know because I would just go and get mad and hit somebody or whatever Um, but it was it always started originating with like some there was like a bully bullying somebody else Mm. and then like me like I would just get angry like I hate it but I think like you know, as I've contextualized that over the years, like obviously that's not, it was like anger, right? It was like violence. And like now it's like over the years, like I just think it's so important for people to hear these stories because what it is, what bullies are and what people that are judging other people are is they're ignorant. And I just keep saying that over and over. It's like, they don't know those, the the girls that you reference or the people that are making fun of you, like they didn't know better. It's not to, it's not giving them a pass, but it's like they're ignorant people, right? And the only way to, to get them out of that and to make them stop bullying people and to make them be compassionate humans is to teach them, right? Exactly. And, and I think these conversations are so important because there's a lot of young people that listen to this show that are going to spawn the next generation of humans. Mm-hmm. And like you said, like a young kid is not born racist or judgmental yeah. or as a bully. Those are learned behaviors. And if and if we as the parents or adults of the next generation can like teach that out of people and say like, hey, that's not OK or like, hey, this is a judgment that you shouldn't have. Like that's how things start to change. But I don't think they can change until people hear conversations like this yeah. and educate themselves. Exactly. And then it gets rid of because like when I started educating myself, I'm like, OK, like violence is not the way to go about this. That's not helping. It's making me actually be, maybe be the bully and it's actually hurting other people. And it's definitely not changing anything. It's making them more angry and mo- and, and more insecure and bully more people. And so, like, the outlet now is this. It's like if, if this conversation between us triggers, you know, thousands of people to go and say, like, oh, like, I'm educated. I'm going to start educating myself more, and I'm going to start training the next generation to not do these things. Like, that's how you actually make change. Exactly. And, you know, it all starts at the home, too. Uh, one of my graphics, uh, Reese Witherspoon, she, like, shared my graphic, but her post was so good because she talked about how she talked to her son. And I, like... I think, and she just wrote this whole thing about how she talked to her son and how, like, it starts in the home. Like, it starts in the house. And I think that is everything to me. It's like every learned behavior and the good and bad, It's we learned it somewhere along the way. And it's like, for us, like, we're leading voices in our generation and the world right now. And people listen to us and people are hearing and watching the things that we do. And because of that, we have a really cool opportunity to show people the right way. And I think that, you know, having conversations in the home, like sitting down and having ugly, hard conversations is so important. And I think back to like when I was a kid and I had like, did you guys have family meetings? I had 
family meetings. Yeah, no, I mean, they were kind of like, I don't know, I made a list of my family, but they were kind of like half-assed meetings. I don't know, I don't know how, like, in-depth we got on those meetings. His family meetings was just everyone talking at once. Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> but family... Or it was like, hey, Michael, don't fuck up. I'm like, oh, okay, and I don't know if you know this, my, my, um, my grandmother is full Japanese. Okay. And my mom's half. And so there's a little bit of that. I think I know what you're talking about. Like yes. Asian parents, like, just do good. Savage. Just, just do good. Yeah. yeah. Like, okay, okay, got it. Perfect. Don't fuck up. Got yeah. it. Got you're the like, message. Okay, great. Thank you. Straight A's. No problem. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, but for us, like, I think when I think of family meetings, they're so messy. For my family, at least. They're so messy. We'll sit down because there's, like, this conversation that we need to have. And it starts, I think everyone's talking over each other. And then one person's like, Stop! And then everyone's like frozen and then one person speaks their truth and another person speaks their truth and then another person speaks their truth. And then it's like by the end of it, you're all sobbing and you love each other again and you're like, let's go to Costco together as a family. I don't know. But I think that more (laughs) families need to do that. And once that starts happening, I think it'll be so beautiful. And I think it's really cool now that the generation that's growing up listening to like voices like us are going to have that. And there's also a lot more diversity and good things that have changed. Like you can listen to a black person that is a voice on a podcast and you can follow people that are breaking stigmas and stuff. So I think the world is heading in the right direction, but we're always going to be faced with walls. And it's like for us to like carefully just start like dismantling these walls that we're going to come up against to like progress further into like a better society yeah people complain about the internet and the state of social media and they're like you know because there's obviously a lot of negative things that could come with the power of the internet and giving every single person a voice and giving everybody a platform and all this different information but i actually think there's more positives than negatives because years ago we would not have been able to have this conversation at a mainstream level without getting a mainstream network involved. And you'd be up against like a few other things. And those people were kind of picking and choosing what got seen and what didn't. So like, again, back to ignorance is like people grew up with a very narrow view of the world and it looked, all of it kind of looked the same and was the same and didn't really push boundaries and didn't really cross the line and didn't really get uncomfortable. And so like you have this generation that just grew up only seeing those things. And with the internet, they hear these conversations or they can see a black perspective or a white perspective or an Asian, but they can see all these different cultural perspectives and in all these different ways of lives in real time. And they can say, Oh, like now I'm going to actually question what my, re- what I thought my reality was because I yeah. can see other things or hear other things. And that just didn't exist before. Exactly. Um, so how did you know that you wanted to be entrepreneurial? Cause you're very entrepreneurial. I had no idea. <laughs> like, at all did you fall into it yeah it all kind of started with this i i guess actually i had to become when we when you first opened the the podcast with a compliment saying it's so cool that you took an idea and made it happen and what's so funny is before i would have never considered myself a creative I learned how to make graphics off my phone and even the graphics I started making were off my phone just because I like didn't really have a computer where I can make graphics off of them and when everything started happening with my platform I just realized that everything I needed was at my fingertips and once you kind of break down that mental idea it's like I think everyone gets here and I think even I'm there right now with some things where you're just like, oh, if I could just have this, then I could do this. And if I just have this, then I can do this. And if you break down that wall and you realize, okay, what do I have in control of myself and like, what can I do? And then also being a self-starter and a hustler and realizing that you want to start getting stuff done and how good it feels when you have an idea and you execute it, I think it was kind of the snowball effect. It first started when I like interned in the social media position and I didn't realize how hard social media was with like posting and editing and creating captions, all this stuff. And then I started making graphics with them off my phone. And then I started making with just my platform now making graphics here and there. And now upgrading to like getting a computer and making graphics there, just so much has changed. And I think when it comes to having that spirit, it's really just a mindset. 
a hundred percent of mindset. I think like you nailed on the head. You like, it's that if then thing. So many people think like, if I can get here, then I can do this. It's like, why can't you just start now? Right. Yeah. And I, that, that's literally been the message of the podcast from the inception. It's like launch fast, adjust and change with feedback. Like, mm-hmm. Any idea, if you just start actually, one, people ask all the time too, like, how do you build confidence? That's how you build confidence too. You actually start doing things and taking action because think about like the person, not that you weren't confident before, but the person you're becoming as you do more and more and put more out in the world and try and like break down new barriers that you thought you couldn't do just by trying and actually putting effort in. And I just tell people like, what's holding you back? Is you're scared of judgment or you're scared of people coming in or you're scared you do it wrong? You do it wrong, do it again, do it right. Like, as many times as it takes like it's just people don't want to they don't want to do they just want to talk themselves out of things you mentioned earlier something about how you were sitting and thinking about how you wanted to lay something out this morning do you have a morning routine um i yeah i do now i um i was going through uh i feel like everyone's going through it but i have like I just have like struggled with like depression and things like that and so i had a really bad depressive episode like it lasted for like about like a month and a half and it was really hard to go through and I've never been honest and open with my mental health online and this a couple of weeks ago I opened up about it and just made a post about it because I was like sorry guys I haven't been active this is what I've been going through and so many people just it was like floodgates of people just being like dude I relate I'm there all this stuff and so I was talking to a friend and she said that she kind of was feeling the same way. And I was like, I just want to feel good again. And so I was like, okay, when was the last time I felt good? That's like a question that I wrote in a post. I'm like, so I'm fake. I'm a hypocrite. Because I had to look back on one of my posts talking about when's the last time I felt good. And I was like, when was the last time I felt good? And so this week I am, I like planned to a routine and this week I've been walking in it and implementing in it. So right now my morning routine is I exercise. Haha, <laughs> it's new you guys. Um, but I started um, running in the mornings with my friend. It's like a run walk, but I'm like, it's a club, it's a run club. Any movement counts. Yeah, and so, yeah, I do that. And then on my drive, I always self-reflect and always think. I think self-reflection is so important. And so I've been spending a lot of time, anytime I'm driving, like spending that time to self-reflect. And I've just, it's so interesting because I was doing that on the drive here and I came up with a really good episode idea for the podcast. And I was debating, I was like, dang, that's kind of controversial, but I'm like, honestly, it needs to be said. And I think my best ideas have come from in those moments where I like get quiet time and stuff, so. I agree. I You call it self-reflection, I call it thinking time, but I like self-reflection better, yeah. I think. I think that's like so, so smart to actually create space to think. Yeah, and I think it's like you're also fighting for those little pockets too because some people are like, I don't have an hour. It's like oh, I when people say that I'm like yeah, you have, you can make time. Yeah, I'm like, dude, you have you're it's like 10 minutes you're getting coffee in the drive-thru. Just sit and think there. Like turn off the radio and think there. Taylor thinks in the shitter. Like yeah. there's places to think. Like you, you know have to I get creative. You know what I tell those people now? It's funny because it's like, you know, this phone in a lot of ways can hold you accountable. And have you ever seen that like screen time thing? Yes. You can go in? Oh, and I, people will message me like, hey, my God, do this, but I don't have time. I'm like, hey, go to your app and open your screen time and, t- and screenshot it and tell me that's how many one. hours are on social. Because if, you, if I see that's more than one. seven hours a week on there, five hours, that's five to seven hours that you could be doing That is something. a good one. That one makes me yeah. But it's true because it holds me accountable. I'm like, oh, I look at my screen time sometimes no. during this pandemic. I'm like, oh, shit. What is a depressive episode? look like do you mean like you just couldn't get out of bed like what what can you explain and walk us through what that actually feels like yeah um so I didn't it's so interesting because I didn't even know what it was I would just have like lows but um essentially what that starts looking like for me is I start to like lose motivation I feel like I'm very like driven and I'm very on top of things And so I just realized I started to lose motivation to do things and create new things. And I started getting like lazy with my ideas. And then my brain starts to like fog. It kind of feels like a fog just like goes over your like head and then like into your chest. And then the next day you wake up and there, it just feels like you don't feel anything. 
and that's like a really scary place to not feel anything because it's like you stop caring and that's ultra scary for me because my platform's new and before I could have a depressive episode while working a nine to five and like you know you can power through that but it's when like your career is on your shoulders and you're like struggling with that it's like a different kind of pressure so you're going through this mental battle of like dang I have no motivation to do anything whether it's an actual chemical imbalance or like something happened and it triggered like a depressive episode for me I'm not quite sure I think it was more like of a chemical imbalance thing I'm like need to like schedule doctor's appointments to like go see but some for some people it something got triggered and it can like stir a depressive episode but for me it was like I wasn't eating I was just like in bed all day um or I would like veg out and like turn on Netflix but I'm not even paying attention to what's happening it just I don't feel anything and that would last for like a couple days and then a friend people would be texting me in the middle of this too and I wouldn't even be able to respond just because like I know you feel like a zombie like you don't have any energy and then um this was like in the middle of when I, I went to Arizona for a little bit to see my parents and my friends would be like, hey, um, do you wanna go like work on something? I'd be like, yeah, I'll be over at like one. And then I wouldn't get to them till eight cause that was the first time I had like energy in the day to like do one thing. And it's really, really hard, but it's also a reality. And I was just like, dang, I mean, it sucks that I feel like I've wasted so many days and weeks and time, but at the same time, it was like emotions that were out of my control. And sometimes you can like snap out of it and be like, okay, like I need to go on a walk. I need to go on a run. Like, dude, I just need to shower, like whatever it is. And then other times there's really no escaping it and, and you have to ride it out. And unfortunately, this is one of those, like you just have to ride it out. But I don't know, for people who deal with that, I'm just like, there's also things you can do, like, are you, do you have the energy to eat? Have you showered today? Like, just little checklist things. Are you drinking water? I know that sounds like so annoying, but it's really true. And so now with my morning routine that I have set up, it's more like preventative measures, like the drinking water, eating healthy, working out, kind of things that will help me and like keep me out of that like, episodes routines do really help prevent any kind of um for me at least yeah just speaking of my own um anxiety Mm -hmm. I think it's really good to have your routines and have things scheduled yes yeah and I think like I would encourage you to do more of what you're doing like sounds like you're on a really good path like obviously like yes this is hard to to hold a platform on your shoulders like you know both of us can understand that yeah but at the same time like I think like go more into this because if like I think you having this conversation not just here but on your show and like I think you'd be surprised how many people like identify with that message and feel a kindred spirit there and like would want to support and talk to you about it and I think Mm -hmm. like you know I always think I'd probably be crazy if we didn't have this platform because we get to have the benefit of having so many this is like therapy right like you just get like you to have this conversation where like if you're sitting at home you don't get to Mm -hmm. and then like what you're already doing like you know getting out there and exercising and doing all these things like getting yourself busy and active and productive and putting good things out into the world and helping other people which you are with the conversations you're having and the content you're putting out there like that's what I think in my personal opinion is going to pull you out of all that I I try to take any of my weaknesses and channel it into creating so Mm -hmm. I think that if you you created a checklist for other people and yeah. maybe you've already done this but a checklist for other people to help prevent their depressive episodes and yeah. anxiety would help you channel um the energy in a different way yeah and what's so interesting kind of how i broke out of this past episode was the biggest thing that was weighing on me was i was like no one knows what's happening like i think people probably just think like oh dom's just busy dom's busy dom's busy that was like the label that they were like like a lot of texts were like, hey, dude, I get it if you're busy, but can you? Um, and so I was like, damn, like they really don't know. So I just decided I'm just going to post something. Um, and when I did, I like sobbed right after I posted it because of just the overwhelming response of how kind people were. And I just came to the realization like transparency and vulnerability is like what is going to like see you through this one like you just have to let people know what you're going through and stuff and I think like you said 
just leaning into that and also creating right like just letting people know they're not alone and channeling that energy with what you have and just also being kind to yourself just being like you're doing the best that you can you're we're living in the middle of a pandemic no one's crushing life right now everyone's just doing their best to create a new normal and that's okay well listen it's not i don't want to keep saying i'm proud of you because it makes it sound like like I'm the person that gets to judge you, no. but but I am. I do mean it as a compliment. Like I'm proud of everything you're doing this year. It's really cool to see you thrive. It's really cool to see you. Like like I said, take an idea from inception, and also like you're really having a fucking moment here with this platform. And you're like you're doing. Re- I mean, from when we first met, when you and I think that was the first time we met when you op- you opened for Kenzie at the Grove thing, yes. right? And this, was, did we meet before? I know you've been in here in, in the studios and you were guests on her show a lot of time. But from that moment, I mean, like think about how much has changed from the time you did that opening act to now. Right. With I know. your platform, with your show, with everything and like your audience. It's pretty it's pretty cool to think about. I know it's really crazy because I worked at that Nordstrom at the Grove and now. And that was what? Like that was last August. So it's mm-hmm. been a little bit over a year. Yeah. And it's like, look how much can change in a year. Exactly. If you could just leave our audience with a piece of advice that you would give them in general, it could be anything, your favorite piece of advice, what would it be? Um, right now, my piece of advice that I'm telling myself and I think everyone should be telling themselves is that you're doing a lot better than you think you are. Everyone's doing a lot better than they think they are. I think everyone's their worst critic. And so if you can just remember that what you're doing right now, as long as it's your best, it's good enough. I agree. And I'm sorry that I had so many seeds from the Sun Life Organic. Yeah, what the throat. hell is going on over well, there? I mean, I didn't want to. I, was, I didn't want to scare you guys. I think I had like the COVID or something. But no. I, you know, this. I, I, and you know, what's funny. It's like during that. Like I should have not kept drinking it during the show, but I'm hungry, so I need to. No, it. it's Sun Life has the best smoothies and also normalized coughing. C- Normalized coughing. Khalil, Hashtag. I'm going to tell Khalil. Khalil, what do you? They, they got to. They got to grind the powders Normalized up or the seeds <laughs> up a little better. Like these things. These things are getting caught in my throat. Taylor, normalize coughing. That's our hashtag. I'm a fucking professional. Yeah. I like to speak on the mic with a clear voice, not this coughing all over the place. Okay, we've had enough of you. Anyways, can you pimp yourself out? Pimp your podcast and your Instagram handle out. Yes. Um. You can follow the podcast along at the Uncomfortable Org. That's the at, and you can follow me at Dom Roberts instead of an E. It's an X. Yep. And it's on Dear Media. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. We're Every, excited. Everywhere podcasts are available. Yes. To watch you flourish. Wow. Thanks, Thank you guys. for coming on. Thank you for coming on, Dom. Thanks for having me.